My mixed platillo bowl has five new growths coming already. That is too early. Normally they start to show in January. My Cymbidium has two spikes coming plus a new growth compensating for the growth that failed during the summer. Well, those two spikes, let me say, are way too early as well. Usually we see them around end of December and a new growth in the middle of fall, unheard of. My Fias, <laughs> I can already see spikes. That is really unheard of. At the time of filming, we are almost into the third week of November and <laughs> goodness me, this orchid normally only just starts to spike around end of February, beginning of March. It's insane <laughs> what is going on, but wait, there's more. You don't want to miss it. It's good to have you on the other side of the intro. Thank you so much for staying. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I appreciate it. I am confused. I'm not going to question it, but I wanted to show you some things that are super early as before the intro. Talk about, wow, what is going on here? But anyway, look, this is abnormal as well. My Dendrobium No ID, this is a Dendrobium Nobly hybrid. It's got a single bud coming. Okay, you would say, so what's the big deal? Well, this one normally only shows any kind of nubbins at the beginning of March and it blooms just in time for when the temperatures warm up to exude its beautiful freesia fragrance. So a single bud, but not only that, this orchid doesn't grow new growth until we are well into the blooming and I've got two new growths starting on her. <laughs> this is gonna be so, so weird. So of course I checked the base of my Dendrobium nobili cooksonianum. And I have two new growths coming on this one. That is insane. It grew three new growths for me in 2023, but it should also be resting now. And well, <laughs> we wait for the blooms. That is when we then see new growth start. So two new growths and I shall be cultivating them. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I am not going to push for blooms. If my orchid wants to grow, I am pushing the new growths and we'll see what happens. Normally I reduce fertilizer this time of year, but I will be working in tandem with both my nobly orchids because let's see how much I can push the growths even with a little reduced fertilizer, because of course it's just getting a little bit more colder day by day. So yes, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Let's see how this goes. Normally they say, if you fertilize your Dendrobium nobilis during the winter, then what you can expect in spring with the nubbins, you get cakeys as opposed to blooms. Why not stick around and see whether that is true or not in my case? And thank you while you are subscribing, uh, just check out that button as well. There's a little thumbs up. Give this video a like, that will be amazing as well. Hope it's not asking too much. So what is dangling here? <laughs> this, uh, I will probably repeat myself in this video. This is insane. My Dendrobium nephrits Alex Poli is blooming two months ahead of time. So one spike came out at the end of August and I'm like, why? Anyway, welcome. You're beautiful. It's good to see you. But these are the blooms that I sort of rely on towards the middle of winter where I'm like, yeah, a little bit of orchid mental boosting, you know, blooms during the winter when it's nasty. Well, I'm not going to say no to these blooms this time of year, but now she's also spiking with two more spikes right over there. So yeah, we're going to have a staggered blooming even if it is premature. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here we are. You're way too soon, but you're super duper welcome. But she's not done yet. This orchid is growing a new growth. Now that is not normal from the behavior of this orchid for the past years that I've owned her. A new growth starting, bang, smack in the middle of fall. Usually by now, same story. We are not exactly resting because I grow in LECA and self-watering. Let's say semi-hydroponics, all the orchids I'm showing you today, but <laughs> this is not normal. Normally we get new growths around late spring, early summer like that. Well, I guess it heard me when I said I would like to make sure that one day I grow some clean growths that are free of thrips. So it may be giving me an opportunity to do that by saying, let's try, let's try and help this 
geezer out <laughs> and see if we grow a new growth during the winter and she can get her act together and stay on top of things. But isn't this awesome? What I've noticed a little bit different is the camera is showing the true color. So, ha, huh, she is not as green. She is more beige, a creamy white, as you can see. Usually she is very chartreuse green with the contrast to Bordeaux and the bloom. Not this time. I think this is also very, very stunning and striking. And she hasn't got a fragrance this time of year, I have to say. Normally I get a sweet, pungent fragrance from her. It's not heavy, it's not obvious, but there is a fragrance, which for me in the winter is always very welcome as well. Mm, not this time. Totally bizarro. But I wanted to show you another one <laughs> that should be blooming in January. And here she is in full bloom. Plus, she has been in bloom for a while because I've got some blooms already going over. Now, this one is Catlia Cerna and she should be blooming, as I said, in January. And this year in 2023, now we're in November 2023 and I'm like two bloomings in the same year. What are you doing? I hope they're not stress blooms because this orchid is not exactly happy in a pot and we shall be remounting her in 2024. But in January, I couldn't enjoy her bloom so much because I already had some pollinators come and go, ooh, cute, cute little orange blooms. And they went for them and they were pollinating my blooms. And I managed to get two seed pods out of her, but there would have been around 10. That's how many blooms went. But these are going over naturally. I haven't observed any pollinators at all because she is in my blooming alley and I'm keeping a sharp eye out for her because isn't this orange just so incredible? <laughs> anyway, this is Catlia Cernua, blooming in mid-November, the second time within a 12-month calendar year, whereas she should be blooming in January. <laughs> madness. Now we're going to move more into the patio because I have someone I need to show you because he will not be left out of this video. I think it's his time to shine very, very soon. So just a minute while I get resituated. Another orchid that is super early, maybe she was triggered because of a massive repot this year, is my Colmenara Masai Red. Now, I have four new growths coming, but the main new growth that is the biggest after the stress of the repot is already growing two spikes. The spikes have already darkened to that beautiful black spear that I enjoy so much, giving this orchid the name Masai and then the red tunic, the red. And you can see how far the spikes have progressed. This normally happens in February because in February, our temperatures are that cold. I am freaking out that this orchid doesn't abort her spikes because of the cold temperatures and she lives outside all year round. Here we are, two spikes. And then there's another spike in each of the other little leads. So we won't get that massive blooming that we are so used to with this one because the new growth that came after the repot, well, understandably they are smaller, but come on, Masai Red starting to spike in November. That's insane very early out of the gates as well. You're gonna just have to wait a minute. Hang on a second. I've got somebody to the right of me. I wasn't addressing you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, somebody to the right of me is sort of like in my ear. Hey, 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 you said you're coming to me. So he was the one I was just addressing. I'm sorry. It is going to be your turn. Just give me a moment. We are going from left to right. Okay, that being said, <laughs> back to a very early bloomer is my Dendrobium lutein blanc. This orchid usually blooms in January as well. So her spikes should be starting around about now for her then to bloom in January. I noticed her first spike when I was looking for a second new growth because this is the only growth she gave me during the summer, normally I get two growths out of her. So I was inspecting the base to see, uh, where's your second growth, hello? And then boom, I almost poked my eye out with a spike. I wasn't looking for a spike on this orchid, not expecting it. So at the end of August, I almost poked my eye out with a spike and I thought, well, look at you. Maybe it was just a rogue spike, but here we are. Six spikes are in bloom. And for a reason I cannot actually say, the seventh spike didn't make it back here. But the first spike was this one. When I was leaning over inspecting the base, I thought, okay, 
and then boom, I almost, you know, if I wasn't wearing glasses, uh, yeah, that would have been a spike in the eye. It's insane, and she is fragrant. She has that gorgeous little molasses fragrance. This time of year, she's aphid-free. Normally, I struggle with her. January is her normal bloom time, so January, February, March, yeah, she blooms that long. And aphids come because, you know, we're coming out of winter and they're hungry. And then this gorgeous, heavy, sweet molasses fragrance appears to be the only kind of food source they think they have around. But hey, let's take it with a silver lining. I don't know what I'm going to show you in January because <laughs> these orchids are going to have finished blooming by then. And I'll be left with, will you stop interrupting me? I'm coming to you. Sorry. He is in my ear. Blah, 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 blah. Anywho, Lutine Blanc, way too early. We'll take it because just funky, gorgeous, and it smells divine around here. The spikes on my ingray coats have already been growing since, well, <laughs> end of October. That was way too early as well. So I was hoping for a Christmas blooming. Let's just say I'm still hoping for a Christmas blooming. However, either I broke one spike of the Crestwood tomorrow star, not entirely sure, but it's gone. So every night, if I find it's a little bit too chilly, I put a blanket up. And I'm very, very cautious about how I put the blanket up. You know, I sling it over my shoulders first, attach the pins, and then I gently lower the blanket and reverse the whole procedure the next day. So yeah, I woke up and uh, a spike was gone. The other one is still progressing nicely. I looked all over the floor to see if that spike that broke off of the crest would is somewhere on the floor, but I can't find it. I can't see it. Should be bright green. And I also checked the blanket. Yes, I did, because if it was something I did, maybe the spike got caught in the blanket. Either way, tis a mystery. Maybe, maybe it's early enough. It's gonna push another spike elsewhere and we still get a double blooming and maybe not. It doesn't really matter. Yes, I want these orchids to bloom for us, but at the end of the day, if this is something that happens and I'm risking the progress of the spikes for light to keep them out here for as long as possible, I'm going to take that gamble. But the spike doesn't look like it's succumbed to the cold. It looks like it was snapped off. I just can't find the pieces to give you a definitive answer. I'm just gonna put it on me because the other spike is still progressing. And if there is something out here going for my Angraecum spikes, then I'm not too concerned. I know, it's sad. But looking at this from the big picture, it's, it's okay, it's okay. You can't imagine how difficult it is to get these to bloom in the gross space. It's a tight squeeze and all the shuffling that goes along with it. <laughs> anyway, they did come out very early as well, totally unexpected. And we still have two bossery spikes, so there's that. We'll see if they will develop and if there is no external interference. Another orchid that is super duper early is my weirdo Neostylus loose neary blue. So I'm getting a lot of spikes, all of them a little bit funky, twisted. We're going to see what the blooms look like this year. <laughs> but she normally blooms in February and these spikes don't take that long to develop. So I don't know what is up with that, but hello weirdo. It's going to be fun seeing what you've got for us this year. <laughs> now, are you ready, monsieur? Are you ready? Okay, now we'll get to him. I can't be doing commentary, cousin, it with you yapping away in my ear. You see, hey, again, you see, this is the personality here that keeps interrupting me when he comes into bloom. He needs a good groom. Welcome. I introduce you to Cousin It if you're not familiar with him. If this is your first time on the patio with me and the orchids, Cousin It is a Maxillaria variabilis. Cousin It is also way too early to bloom. Now, granted, every year that I've had him, it would appear that he starts to bloom earlier than normal. Normal being that he starts to spike around mid to end December and starts to bloom really, really profusely January through April and May. Yeah, it's really nice to have him that long in bloom. <laughs> if the voices in my head would stop, but you know, that's part and parcel of Cousin It. Anyway, so last year in 2022, he had his first bloom in December. This year, he had his first bloom end of October. So three weeks later, I am seeing blooms starting to pop out everywhere. And I'm glad I can stand a little bit at a distance because you can now see them clearly. His first blooms were a little bit more buried inside his foliage. Now they're starting to come out 
everywhere. So this is only the start. We are in for a treat. And normally he grows up against the hedge to the left of me during the summer months where I can protect him more from the bright sun. Well, now he is right up against the west hedge. The deep south is yonder to the left. That is where he's a little bit more protected. Now he gets a little bit of morning sun and the most of the day is shade. And of course, now he's becoming a little bit more vocal. So we'll be seeing a lot more of Cousin It in the months to come, which he is thoroughly going to enjoy and so am I. He's been a very silent candidate, but when he comes into bloom, his demand for attention increases. So it is during six months that he gets as much as attention as possible. And then the other six months, he just wants to grow and be pampered without any interference. And with that, I'm going to love and leave you. But in the meantime, I want to thank you so, so much for watching this video. Thank you for your support on the channel. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.